Wake up from cryosleep as you explore one of Jupiter's moons trying to find out what happened to the rest of your crew. This is the Turing Test, a first person puzzle shooter all taking place in outer space. It's been available on PC and other consoles since around 2016 but makes its debut on Nintendo Switch this week. Taking place in the distant future, we wake up from cryosleep in the shoes of Ava Turing, a scientist working for the ISA as an explorer on Jupiter's moon Euphora. While we were asleep, the rest of the crew started the expedition before us but has since gone missing. Now it's up to us to slowly unravel the mystery of what happened to them while also exploring the supposed barren moon. Subtle story beats and lore are slowly explained as we make our way deeper into the moon. Usually this comes through the environmental storytelling found in the first person puzzles we're solving a la portal-like gameplay. Additionally, the conversations between Ava and her AI companion Tom that also works for the ISA slowly uncovers new details that only further add depth to the crew's mystery. While the information is slowly dripped out at a consistent pace, it didn't really surprise me until the very later half of the game that honestly did some pretty darn cool things. Still, a lot of the lore can be guessed easily if you're able to pick up on any of the easter eggs along the 6 hour campaign. Right off the bat, many people are going to compare the Turing test to Portal simply because both are first person puzzle shooters and well, Portal really did lead the genre with its popularity. That's not to say that those comparisons are wrong because these two games share a lot in common, but that's not the defining factor of the Turing test. Although this does take place in a mostly white colored science facility too, the puzzle mechanics offer enough new elements that felt different from the rest or at least from the main competition. For example, our go-to gun uses energy orbs to activate switches and other machines around us, all vital to solving puzzles. These puzzles come in the shape of rooms that usually feel like they give us one or two little resources in order to solve the darn thing. It's in those many instances that this puzzle game also feels more like a resource management system as I was tasked to figure out how to open four doors with only two keys. While challenging at times, the puzzles never really felt impossible and I was able to solve most of them relatively quickly. Over time I'd run into rooms that would introduce a new element, may it be a magnet device hovering over the room, or a lever that switches the circuit boards around the door. While I was stunned to find new elements at first, I'd always find the fun in them trying to figure out exactly how they worked and how the new puzzle devices changed previously solved puzzles. Aside from the core rooms or puzzles, occasionally I'd come across alternative pathways that led to new optional puzzles. These puzzles usually felt more challenging than the main puzzles, but also felt worth exploring because of the lore they provided. These extra sections would offer more information on the crew's status, further developing the story and enticing me to keep moving forward. By the end of my puzzle journey, I felt content with the gameplay. From one perspective, it felt like a proper successor to a lot of the great puzzle shooters in the genre, but at the same time, it didn't reinvent the wheel or do anything astonishingly well that made it shine above the rest. It was adequate, though I did love the multiple endings by the end of it that got me to go back and change my choices. The Turing test fits the bill, and that's to say that it's stylized exactly as you'd probably expect. It's a first person shooter set in unexplored space and well, it looks the part. As you make your way into the depths of this research facility, you're surrounded by white and grey walls with subtle glimpses of color coming from the lights and LEDs on the hardware around you. It's simplistic with little details to go around, but there's beauty in minimalism. Playing the Nintendo Switch version, I noticed a significant drop in resolution that made this port look fuzzier compared to its PC or other console counterparts similar to the Doom Nintendo Switch port. Unlike that though, this game runs at a mostly solid 30 frames per second, though it does drop once you get into the more complex rooms with moving objects. While I enjoyed the visual presentation for the most part, I couldn't say the same for the music. It's not that it's necessarily bad because the ominous playing piano playing as I enter a new room was fitting. However, it also got repetitive. For some reason, the same tracks are used over and over again, and during the course of the 6 hour campaign, it just got boring. Luckily it's not all that bad though because the voice delivery for Ava and her AI companion are both done well. Ava didn't feel too over dramatized for the situation at hand while the AI Tom came off as a soothing ASMR voice. The Turing Test is an adequate first person puzzle shooter that doesn't reinvent the wheel but does just enough to justify its existence among some of the best in the genre. Its story and lore were certainly the most appealing parts that lured me in as I made my way through each of the puzzle rooms that never really felt all that challenging or complicated. For its 6 hour adventure length at a $20 price tag, it's a good adventure to go on for the weekend, but one you should perhaps wait until it goes on sale or juggle with your other options in the genre first.